While high-stake diplomatic talks between Russia and the West are still ongoing, tensions continue. Russia has amassed thousands of troops at the Ukrainian border, while the United States responded by putting troops on high alert, ready to deploy to Europe. Is war now closer than ever? To discuss all the latest developments, I'm joined by Russia's permanent representative to the EU, Vladimir Chizov. So, Ambassador, thanks a lot for being with us. Let me start by the most obvious question. Is Russia ready to invade Ukraine or is it all a bluff? It's not an issue of readiness. Russia has no plans to invade either Ukraine or any other country. Uh, it's, uh, it's a bluff created not in Russia but in those countries uh, that are now spreading uh, this hy hysterical message, I would say, across Europe and the world. Historical message, you said, but it's a fact that uh, Russia was the first to deploy offensive weapons and systems within striking distance from Ukraine. If this is not a direct challenge of the country's uh, sovereignty, so what is? You will be surprised how many offensive weapons NATO has deployed along Russian borders, not to say of uh, military bases and so on. And I would even add to that uh, as a point of statistics, that the number of uh, overflights along Russian borders uh, in the Black Sea region, for example, uh, last year increased by 60%. You see a, a threat of your security by NATO doing this, but you did that. You amassed thousands of troops near Ukrainian border. What is at stake for Russia now? The stake for Russia is Russian national security. That is the reason why uh, Russia has uh, put forward an initiative in the form of draft agreements with the United States and with NATO countries that would uh, actually put on paper, in a legally binding form, uh, a number of commitments that had been uh, agreed uh, throughout the last 30 years since the collapse of the Soviet Union. When uh, in those days, uh, NATO uh, promised not to expand eastwards. Uh, in the words uh, of the then uh, U.S. Secretary of State, uh, not an inch eastwards. Uh, and since then, we uh, faced five, as many as five waves on, of NATO enlargement in the eastern direction. So when uh, today, some people uh, get excited that Russia is getting closer to NATO. It's not Russia getting closer to NATO, it's NATO getting closer to Russia. So, but Russia, as you said, submitted some of the demands, including, as you said, that uh, an end to NATO's uh, expansion towards the east and also to effectively end uh, Ukraine's ambitions to join the alliance, but isn't it uh, an attempt to recreate, let's say, the Soviet spheres of influence? Is this what you are trying to do? No. Uh, actually, uh, what we hear from the West, be it the United States or, or uh, NATO or even the European Union, uh, in the last uh, uh, weeks and months, is uh, a reiteration of the principle that uh, all independent and sovereign countries have the right for their own uh, security arrangements and uh, the, uh, the uh, doors of NATO are open for everyone. But uh, saying this, uh, they always omit the second part of the formula, which was actually agreed back in 1999 in Istanbul and I can quote from that, from the uh, Charter for European Security. Each participating state has an equal right to security. We reaffirm the right of each and every state to be free to choose and change its security arrangements, including treaties of alliance, as they evolve. NATO has not evolved. But moreover, each state also has the right to neutrality. Each participating state will respect the rights of all others in those regards and they will not strengthen their security 
at the expense of the security of other states. So what you are saying is that Ukraine's ambitions to join the alliance or other countries, uh, post-Soviet uh, democracies, is a, a threat to your security, to Russia's security? Any, any ambitions, uh, any plans to join any security alliance should be uh, commensurate with uh, taking into regard the uh, the uh, interests of uh, national security of other countries. In this case, uh, countries that are next door. An open door policy, uh, you know, it is formulated as if NATO uh, existed in a vacuum, as if there was nobody else around NATO. So all options are on the table for you, including a military escalation. Not a nuclear war, no. <laughs> That's good to know. But you know, all this, any, any military escalation, any uh, Ukrainian invasion... We believe in diplomacy. And uh, I can only hope that our uh, interlocutors uh, here in Europe and beyond the Atlantic, uh, they uh, stick to the same uh, principle uh, that any difference can and should be resolved by diplomatic means. But any military escalation also risks the viability of, for example, Nord Stream 2 pipeline. Do you consider this as a real risk and Russia can really afford to let this happen? You know, it's not only uh, Nord Stream 2, but uh, the overall uh, situation in, with European security. The European security system, as we uh, all envisaged back in 1975 at Helsinki. But you didn't tell me about Nord Stream 2 pipeline. But are you worried over a blow of this project? I think that uh, European consumers should be the first to be worried because they will uh, have to live without, uh, you know, a relatively cheap uh, Russian gas uh, and abundance of it and will have to, to find other means of heating their homes. Uh, well, winter is not over yet. Uh, and of course, to provide electricity for their households. But there will also be a huge cost, billions of, of euros for Russia. Uh, well, Russia will find uh, where to sell its gas. So Ambassador, thank you very much for being with us on Global Conversation. Thank you.